In this example problem, we're asked to determine the station of the endpoint of a horizontal alignment, draw the alignment, and label each component. And what we'll actually do for the for the drawing part, we'll actually take a look at the actual design plan. So this is an so an actual project that was designed and constructed. We are told that the project begins at station 11 plus 50 and starts with tangent T1. So we have a table for our tangents. And that tangent has a bearing, the starting tangent has a bearing of north 26 degrees, 2 minutes, 56.1 seconds west. We're also told that the project ends 44.48 feet before the PT of curve 5. So that's our second table, is our curve table. And the two pieces of information when we're looking at the tangent table, these are the distances in between the curves. So it isn't the tangent that's associated with the curve. It's essentially, if we think about successive curves, it would be the distance from the PT of one curve to the PC of the next curve. So those are the differences between these two tables. Further illustrating what, what we're looking at with these two tables of information, the tangent table and a curve table. And essentially what we're looking at here is the being provided the minimum amount of information that we need to be able to solve this problem. So in our tangent table, we're only given the lengths. And in our curve table, we're given the tangent length, which is T, and the delta, so how much that one tangent departs from the next one. And we'll also see at the end of those angles right and left, RT and LT. And that's telling us which direction that curve is turning. Is it turning to the right or to the left? So looking back at the tangents, again, the tangent table tells us the lengths between the curves. So that's in the PT of one curve to the PC of the successive curve. In our curve table, the tangent lengths that are provided are the T. So that's what we're used to calculating things for our horizontal curves. That's the T that we're given. The T that we use is in this table. So taking that information and starting to solve for what we're looking for, one of the things we can do is we can start to combine some of the information. So we can take our, our deflections, and this is going to help us actually draw the alignment. We can take those deflections, those deltas, and combine them with our tangents, and we can then turn that into actual bearings. So our first tangent we were given, it starts out at a bearing of north 26 degrees, 2 minutes, 56.1 seconds west. And then for our first curve, we know that it turns 61 degrees, 7 minutes, 48.2 seconds. So that's our, our given information for curve 1. And so we're going to take that information and we're going to apply it to our bearing. So we're going to take that bearing, the first bearing that we were given, and we're going to turn 61 degrees to the right. So adding those two together is going to give us the bearing of the second tangent. So north, 35 degrees, 4 minutes, 52.1 seconds to the east. And so the difference between the first and the second bearing is that delta. So that's how we, how we combine those to find the bearings of each of those tangents for our tangent table. So a little more information here. This shows us the full, basically, solution to the problem. But I'll I'll work through one as an example. So some of the information that we've pulled in here, we've we've got our delta, we were given our t, and we're going to see how to calculate the remainder of these components. So starting out with the radius, we can calculate that based on the t distance that was given and also our delta. So those are the two values that we need. So tangent length divided by the tangent of delta divided by 2. And so for the first one, we calculate a radius of 420 feet. Next, we can calculate the length. We're going to need to know the radius that we just calculated and the delta. So our equation is 100 multiplied by delta divided by the degree of curvature. The degree of curvature is also equal to 18,000 over pi times the radius. So that's what we're going to show there. So it's 100 
multiplied by 61 degrees, 7 minutes, 48.2 seconds, divided by 18,000 over pi times 420. And this is going to give us a length of 448.11 feet. Next, we can calculate the station of the PI. And so this, this is the first one. We're going to start with the beginning station. That was station 11 plus 50. That was a given. Then we're going to add the length of the tangent. So from that's from the tangent table. And then also the T from this curve. So we'll need to add those three components. So 11 plus 50 plus the length of the tangent that was given in our tangent table, 176.49 plus the T for this curve, 248.04, gives us a PI station of 15 plus 74.53. So essentially, again, these, these distances, if we're starting with the beginning station here, so that was given as 11 plus 50, we needed to move along our tangent distance of 176.49, and that was the the first tangent given in our tangent table. And at that point, the curve is going to start. But we're trying to establish where the PI is. And we can do that using the T that we calculated. And we calculated that as 248.04. So again, adding those three numbers, 1150, plus 176.49, plus 248.04. So that's going to give us that state PI station of 15, plus 74.53. Hopefully we're thinking ahead now to the PC. So we passed the PC when we were calculating the PI. So all we have to do now is move back from the PI the distance T, the 248.04, so the PC is the PI minus T, 15 plus 74.53 minus 248.04 gives us a PC station of 13 plus 26.49. And next, as we move along our curve, we're going to move along the length of the curve, L, to find that PT. So the PT is the PC station plus the length of the curve L. So 13 plus 26.49 plus the length 448.11 gives us a PT station of 17 plus 74.6. And we can carry that process through the rest of the alignment through each of the curves, adding the tangents. And what we're going to end up with is a final PT of station 51 plus 44.48. But if we remember in the instructions for the problem, we were told that the project ends 44.48 feet before the PT of curve 5. So what we'll actually need to do is to subtract 44.48 feet from the PT station, and that's going to give us an, an exact and round number of station 51 for the final answer for the problem we were asked for that final point in the alignment. So station 51 is the answer there. So this is the actual design plan for this project. So when we think about drawing this alignment, um, one thing we should notice is that the north arrow is kind of pointing to the upper right of the page. So maybe rotating this so it's the way we would we would think about this. We remember if we started with the alignment that was north or the bearing that was north 26 degrees, 2 minutes, 56.1 seconds west. So that initial tangent looked like this. We had a 61 degree forward 61 degree deflection to that forward tangent and that gave us a tangent with a bearing of north 35 degrees 4 minutes 52.1 seconds to the east and then we had another curve to the left another curve to the right and then another final curve that continued to the right so those were our curves and the alignment that we ended up with so if you were drawing along 
with this problem, you should have ended up with a single line that traces along this project from beginning to end, starting with station 11 plus 50 and ending here at station 51. So looking a little bit into more detail in this project, we can see the beginning station here. We're looking along the L line, so that's the main line of the project. And we can zoom in a little bit more to these curve details and we should recognize these numbers as the numbers that we calculated in our uh, example when we were looking through that first row of the table. A couple other pieces of information here, the super elevation and the design speed are given. So a 4% super elevation and a design speed of 35 miles per hour. So that's the first sheet for the horizontal alignment. Now on sheet number two, we can see we need to match up with that first page on sheet four that ended at station 18. And our other match line is going to be at station six. Uh, sheet 6 at station 31. Uh, the sheet number, if we're looking for that, is in the upper right. So this is sheet 5, and again, it's going to match with sheet 4 and sheet 6. And if we're looking for the curve information on this page, we see that there are two. We see along the L line the two curves that we're going to have, zooming into that information. So if we continued working our way through that table, we would see these numbers pop up as well. Um, a change in the design speed on this portion, so we're at 40 miles per hour here. Uh, and these are two consistent curves here with a radius of 720 feet. Moving now to sheet 6, tying into the previous sheet, sheet 5, that ended at station 31, and tying into sheet 7 on the next page that's at, at station 42. This page has one horizontal curve along the L line with these characteristics similar to what we've seen before. And again, if we had continued through that table with the calculations, we would have been more familiar with this. But these are the numbers that are in the overall table that we used to solve the problem with. And finally, here we are on sheet 7. It's the last sheet in the alignment. We see that the station ends at, or the project ends at station 51, and it, this ties into to sheet six that ended at station 42. And here are the characteristics of the final curve at the end of the alignment with a PI at station 50 plus 13.55 that helped us determine the final solution to the problem for the end station at station 51. So this works us through some very basic information that we were given for the problem and shows us how this relates to an actual design plan and how you can carry those small details from the beginning to, to build and understand more of the characteristics of the horizontal alignment and specific curves and tangents. We're looking at bearings radii, deflection angles, lengths, tangents to the final solution.